Pertaining to animal husbandry, uh, when it comes to humic acids, uh, their main function is uh, within the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, given that, uh, as I mentioned, humic acids are non-soluble except for in very high pH levels, uh, when they enter the uh, animal's organism, they only make, they only stay within the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, they uh, carry out their different properties or functions, and they then they are excreted through the organism. Uh, some of these properties or functions that take place uh, with humic acids within the gastrointestinal system is uh, one of the main ones is uh, detoxification of the organism. So humic acids bind to themselves, uh, heavy metals and uh, different types of organic uh, toxins, whether mycotoxins, uh, and uh, bind them into stable forms, which then get excreted through our organism. But at the same time, they release uh, essential nutrients, uh, which are made readily available for the body because humic acids uh, provide these nutrients in chelate bonds. Mm -hmm. Uh, which then are uh, readily recognizable by the body and uh, absorbed instead of uh, released. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's one of the main functions of humic acid. What this results in is the support of the immune system and the overall productive health of farm animals. Uh, mm -hmm. Afterwards, uh, one of the unique things is the fact that uh, humic acids are non-soluble and they go through an organism you also improve the properties of the manure, farm manure, which then you use to fertilize the fields. So it's yeah. like, uh, it's as like, you like mentioned, uh, it's part of the whole circular uh, uh, nexus or like the soil plant uh, animal nexus, which is all interconnected. And that's actually amazing to hear. So. I think we should repeat maybe these three main things. So when 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 we have farmer here and whenever a farmer are listening to this video now, so these are the main main benefits why humic acids are so beneficial for uh, uh, for animal husbandry and how you can actually optimize your farm economics with supplementing your farm animals with humic acids, as, as Peter mentioned. So we can probably repeat the first. First and the foremost would be improved immunity, as you mentioned, because they go through the intestinal tract. So improved immunity means improved producing parameters. And we have it tested in trials. We have amazing trials uh, conducted through, through, our, through the research institutions and veterinary institutions that are showing those results. Uh, the next, as you said, uh, it's definitely, they are being, they are excreted you know, they help their humic acids only because they go through the intestinal uh, digestive tract. They are being excreted through the animal body, which can help produce a very good quality of the manure. And what would be the next uh, thing, if you can summarize that? Well, I mentioned uh, detoxification. Oh, yeah. so, uh, if, even if we look at uh, one of the major challenges that are constantly being monitored, whether it's in the European Union or globally in the food industry, is the uh, occurrence of mycotoxins. Uh, currently, most uh, mycotoxin binders are anorganic, mm -hmm. but uh, research is showing that uh, organic-based uh, mycotoxin binders uh, provide an alternative uh, solution to uh, other products on the market. So this is currently being researched as well. Uh, and this is uh, one of the main uh, substances are actually humic acids, mm -hmm. uh, exactly for the properties to bind not only uh, inorganic uh, substances such as, or uh, mm -hmm. elements such as heavy metals, but as I mentioned, uh, organic uh, toxins such as mycotoxins or even uh, dioxins and PCBs and so forth. Mm -hmm. And can but you maybe just tell a little bit briefly about the mycotoxins because some people might just not know what, what it is. <laughs> uh, so mycotoxins are pretty much uh, metabolites of certain uh, fungi mm -hmm. that uh, can grow on crops. So if you have crops where 
uh, certain con uh, weather or climatic conditions exist where uh, crops get infected with uh, certain uh, fungi. Uh, then you have uh, these fungi that produce metabolites. These metabolites are the mycotoxins, which are very toxic to uh, animals and human beings as well. Uh, this is a major challenge because uh, these uh, mycotoxins are, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're durable uh, against uh, processing, against heat and so forth. So they can retain within the, they can stay within the uh, feed. Mm -hmm. And this can put as a challenge to animal husbandry or okay. uh, to okay. animal husbandry farmers. And uh, then it can also enter the food chain and become problematic or it can affect human health. So uh, there's two main approaches to this. One is the use of mycotoxin binders in uh, compound feed. Mm -hmm. And the other one is monitoring. Mm -hmm. For the occurrence of mycotoxin binders. Mm -hmm. or, sorry, not for mycotoxin binders, but for mycotoxins. My mycotoxins. So these are pretty much very difficult. Th these are pretty much, you know, in simple words, as you said, like I'm, I'm going to just simplify like a certain types of to toxins coming from the fungi that are basically hidden in the feed. And obviously, uh, they are very dangerous because. Once they get into the food chain, they can influence not only animal health, but also human health. And the EU is already, as you said, like European Union is already is trying to seek for the solutions and you have just... Yeah, so uh, that's one of the things within the EU currently, uh, there's a program where uh, all the mycotoxin binders are registered as technological feed additives. And this is currently uh, the approach to uh, making sure that uh, whatever is marketed uh, on the market uh, has that approval as well. So these are, uh, there's still a long ways to go before we can, uh, you know, before humic acids uh, enter that stage. But in uh, research, research and development, these are some of the next steps that are being looked at is how to, uh, or at different alternatives to mycotoxin binders. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you very much for the explanation. It's I think it's it's amazing to hear, um, you know, the information and and the knowledge and wisdom behind the humic acids and what they can do, what they can offer. And it's very important to really um, start understanding these little bits and pieces because it, like they are so complex and it's very important to really. Uh, explain <laughs> those properties and how they behave what they are uh, and what's actually happening uh, in the food chain and how you know toxins and heavy metals and you know as as you explain are getting into the food chain and like it's actually good that the eu is already uh, trying to seek for the solutions and and it's great that there are solutions and obviously um uh, and there are some certain properties that humic acids uh can be represented as, as one of the solutions to really help reduce uh, toxins and heavy metals from, from the food chain overall when we talk about the complex 